we celebrating as America's freedom tomorrow, the 4th of July. The Independence Day. And, and the Lord began to deal with me about, you know, we can spend millions and millions of dollars celebrating Independence Day for America. But we fail to celebrate the independence of the life and freedom and liberty of living for Jesus Christ. I know there is liberty in serving the Lord. I know you're hot. I'm not going to apologize for preaching too long or not long enough, and I'm just going to preach what God laid on my heart tonight. Because you know what? The devil will get a lot of celebration tomorrow. But they eat meat. I tell you what, a lot of people eat and lay out because of the fourth. So I don't want to celebrate the devil's things. I want to celebrate the life and freedom in Jesus Christ. But you got to see, Bible. I'm going to be preaching out of the book of Romans, but I'm going to read a few scriptures, and I'm going to go through four, five, or six scriptures that'll be up here. So uh, if you just want to follow along, then I'll tell you to turn to Romans, this fourth chapter. But we're going to read a few scriptures. And, and 1 John 1 and 8 says, no, six, uh, Romans 6 and 23. We're on the same page. The Bible says, For the wage of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The book of Romans, the third chapter. says the 23rd verse says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ and I've heard a lot of people say and there's a lot of controversy over this scripture that that's just past tense that I have sinned but 1 John 1 and 8 says it like this if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So if we say that we have not sinned, we make Him a liar and His word is not in us. Now, if anybody says I'm preaching that you have a license to sin, I beg your pardon. Because we say, because we understand what the Word of God says, that the wages of sin is death. And we all have sinned, according to John, 1 John 1 and 8 says, it's just not a past tense. Well, I don't sin. I don't mess up. Revelation, I'm just telling you just how potent the Word of God is and just how careful you got to be. Revelation 21 and 8 says, well, somebody says, I don't sin. Well, let me just see if this hits anybody tonight. First, Revelation 21, 21 and 8. It says, but the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and the murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone which is the second death. Now that scripture I only heard just a few of them when I was growing up. Oh y'all don't get quite home. We fix and celebrate some freedom. As a child, I heard that scripture. My mama says, let me tell you something. All liars have their part in the lake of fire. Amen. How many of you ever had your mama and daddy tell you that? And then they'd set me on fire when I lied. And you know what? Then they, they, then they would set me on fire. In other words, me and Sister Kathy was talking to them one day, and I said, I wasn't mean. And Sister Kathy said, he's a little mischievous. 
But you see, I've always heard that all liars have their part in the lake of fire. And the, the whoremongers and the, the sorcerers and the idolaters. But look what else it says. It says, but the fearful and unbelieving. Come on now, I'm getting on somebody's sin. I'm getting on somebody's sin. You know what? If you're afraid of anything but God, I mean, oh, you're living in fear. And if you don't get rid of that fear, you have sin in your life. And if you don't repent of that sin, you'll bust hell wide open. Come on. Because the wage of sin is what?
Believe in hope. You know, I'm going to stop there just for a second. You know what? My whole life has lived. Everything that I've ever faced in my life, I've always been against, against the odds. You know what? When this church is building that new church, how many, how many naysayers is out there trying to kill it, trying to talk bad about it? They ever will you turn? The spirit of jealousy is eating people up, and they don't think we can do it. But I got news for them. I'm going to believe and hope against hope. You know what? Because I'm against the odds. Because I got Jesus Christ. Believed in hope. And it seems like your situation too far gone. All my kids too mean. My family's too mean. They'll never turn to God. You know what you got to do? You got to speak in those things that's not as they were. But all hope's gone. You got to do like Abraham. You know what he believed in? He believed in hope against hope. And the devil's telling you because you've messed up in your life, you have know, had so many problems that you'll never be fit for nothing. Let me tell you something you can believe as long as you got breath in your body and as long as Jesus Christ is dealing with you, I know you got hope. And when you got hope, you can believe in hope against hope. When the devil tells you you're going down and the devil tells you you'll never make it, you got Jesus on the inside. You tell the devil, I'm not going to live in the spirit of fear. I'm not going to live in the spirit. I'm not going to live in those spirits that send me to hell. I got Jesus Christ on my side. And if God be for me, guess what? And I want God to send that anointing to you. The enemy don't want me to preach this tonight. He wants me to just shut up. Not from you guys. How many knows he's real? But you know what I'm going to do, Brother Mark? I'm going to preach the word. Amen. And if you don't like it, you know what I'll do the next time I'm going to church? Yeah. I'll preach it again. Yeah. And if you don't like it then, guess what? I'll preach it again. Yeah. But Abraham, he believed in hope against hope. That he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall thy seed be and being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body. Now what? Hey. When he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb, he staggered not at the promise of God through what? Unbelief. But was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able or able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it is written now it was not written for his sake alone that he was imputed to him but for was also but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. I'm going to push through it. I'm going to push through it because I know I've been dealing with me like this all week. There's some people sitting under the sound of my voice that the devil has weighed you down with the cares of this life. He's weighed you down with the mistakes you made in your life. He's told you you'll never get the word of God. But I'm, I'm here tonight to celebrate. I'm here to celebrate my freedom in Jesus Christ. And I'm going to tell you what he has set you free from. And the Bible says the wind is the sin is death. And he gave Abraham a word. He said, you will bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Isaac. And you know what Abraham did, Brother Jim? He fell on the ground, put his face to the ground, and he started laughing at God. You know why? Because he didn't believe. He said, I'm dead. My wife's dead. The deadness of her womb. I mean, it was but God got a hold of him. And even when they went to tell Sarah that she was going to bring forth a son, she laughed within herself. I mean, it was because it was just impossible because they was dead. Somebody say free. Somebody say free. I'm telling you, you know what? It was 
it a possible thing here? Abraham was 100 years old and his wife was 90 years old and God gave them a promise that they was going to bring forth a son. It was so against the hope. It was such against the odds that it caused them to laugh at God. But you know what? Down deep inside, they knew that God was going to do what he had said he was going to do. He was going to perform that which he had spoken. And else God can raise the dead before life even begins. This is one death I'm talking about. Before life ever took place, what did God do? He raised the dead. You see, there's people that has come to God that's never known God. And I want you to understand something. The ways of sin is dead. And your life is so miserable because the life you chose to live, you ain't never gave God any attention. And God starts dealing with you. And when you come to the house of God and give your heart to God, that means He's raising the dead before life ever begins. Come on. That gets me excited. You may not like it, but I'm telling you, the God I can, that I serve, He can raise the dead even begins. Because the ways of sin is death. It'll grip your life. It'll rule your mind. It'll take everything that you got to live and exist in this life. Because the sin that's grabbed your life, that's gripped your life, it's got you miserable. It's got you all depressed. It's got you all down and out. I know you don't know God, but let me tell you something. I know a God that can raise the dead before life begins. Abraham was dead.
This paper says somebody that ain't never know God. God can change their life and he can raise the dead before a life will ever begin. Oh, oh, let me tell you about another death in the Bible. Jesus loved Lazarus and Mary and Martha. I'm just taking my time. Jesus loved Lazarus, Mary, and Martha. And Jesus and his disciples were out somewhere ministering and doing their thing. And somebody sent word to Jesus that Lazarus is sick. Let me know the story. He think Jesus jumped up right there and said, let's go. That man took his time. spoke to his disciples, Brother Jim, and he said, all right, let's go. We got to pray for Lazarus. He's asleep. Have you know the church is asleep? Amen. Me and Brother Grown, Grown went to a church uh, Thursday night, and the devil hates us so bad, we got attacked before we can get out the door. Verbally attacked loud in the church. You know what I'm doing, Lord? I'm shouting the Bible. You know why? Because I got God. Amen. 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 But Jesus said to his disciples, it's time to go. Lazarus is asleep. And you know what his disciples said? Wake up. He said, they told Jesus, said, if he's asleep, let him go on. We all need a little shut out. We all need a little rest. Jesus spoke to them plainly. Lazarus is dead. And here comes Jesus. And here comes Martha. She seen Jesus, and it's what she told him. John 11, chapter 20, verse 1. Martha then went out to meet him and she said, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. And Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. And Martha said unto him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. I like that part. Now she had enough faith. Can you notice bear with me, friends? I know it's hot. But I gotta preach one God later on. There's some people sitting here today, whether you want to admit it or not, you dead. There's things real in your life that rules your mind. It captivates your imagination. And the devil's always telling you things that's not true. And he's making you believe it. And you're walking and living your life in the spirit of death. And I'm telling you, we got to start celebrating life. And we got to start celebrating independence from these things. Martha's faith was only good enough. Before death took place. She told Jesus, said, and, and this is very familiar scripture. I'm just preaching what God went on. She told Jesus, said, you know what? If you had been here, my brother wouldn't have died. I kind of like her faith, but I kind of don't like her faith. Because the Bible says, you know what? And there's nothing impossible in God. I mean, because he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. I'm telling you, her faith was only good enough before death took place. And here it gets me to the point. How many know Jesus can raise the dead before life begins. Amen. And that's representing people that come to God that has never known Him. Amen. But now we're coming to the saints of God that they've done come to Christ and then something's done happen and death creeps in again. How many's ever had death creep in? Yeah. How many's ever had a mistake in your life? Yeah. How many's ever seen? Sister Chris 
raise my faith was good enough before I made a mistake. Am I preaching to somebody? Do you understand what I'm preaching to? You see, my faith was good enough in somebody. My faith was good enough in myself before I messed up and dad stepped in. But you know what? I ain't got enough faith to believe that God can raise the dead. And death has gripped my life. And I walk around and I'm miserable. I'm walking around and I can't have no joy. I'm walking around and my faith don't exist. Every time I get sick, it wasn't for pills. I would just die because my faith was only good enough as long as I was alive. I ain't talking about no six foot old guy. Oh, I had a brother tell me the other day, you know what? I got so mad I cut somebody else. The way to the sin is what? And you know what? This gentleman felt so miserable after he made that mistake. You know what? He beat himself down for a long time. He felt unworthy for nothing. His faith was only good enough as long as he was living. Come on. Am I preaching something like that? My faith can't just be good enough for the living. Because I serve a God that can resurrect the dead. I serve a God that laid in the tomb for three days, but he's not there anymore. He's been resurrected. I want you to understand 
Jesus, Martha's faith was only good enough before death took a place, took hold of Lazarus' mouth. You know what? You and I, we can only believe God as long as we do it two years and all goes well and never make a mistake. But I'm telling you, if you live life, you will make a mistake and it will control your life if you let it and you will die right then because the wages of sin is death. But let me tell you, I serve a God that will resurrect the dead. He said, I am the resurrection and I am the light. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he what? And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe thou this. Now the Bible says it's once appointed of the man to die, and after that the judgment. That's not the kind of death I'm talking about tonight. I'm talking about a spiritual death. I'm talking about the devil trying to destroy your faith. I'm talking about the devil trying to weigh you down because you made a mistake. You had faith before death took place. But if you accepted Jesus Christ, let me tell you who you accepted. You accept the resurrection. You accepted the life. And he that believeth in him shall not die, but shall live.
you will never be successful as a minister of the gospel. You know what? If I have anything to do with it, I won't. But as long as Jesus is on for me and God be for me, who can be against me? No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Let me tell you something. It may be against the odds, but God's going to bring revival to the house of salvation. Because you see, I just don't have faith in death. It's easy for the church to believe that God can save a lost soul. It's easy for them to believe that God can raise the dead before life. But you see, after we come and we start worshiping God and we stomp our toes up and we fall down flat of our face and you know what, the whole world's judging you and you sit there thinking that you're dead forever, but let me tell you something. If you know Jesus Christ, he told Martha, said, I am the resurrector and I am the life. What does he resurrect you from? He said, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. And the Son therefore shall make you free, you free indeed. And I like this one more thing too. You can look at it up here. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin. Amen. Why are you so happy tonight? Because I'm celebrating my independence. I'm celebrating my independence. And if you don't want to be on board with me, you're going to get that out. Because as for me, I'm going to celebrate my independence. Have you ever made a mistake? Yes, I have. Have you ever fell, fell flat in your face? Yes, I have. But not only did I believe God can save me before I ever met him, but after I met him and I've done something that caused death, I believe that he can resurrect the dead. So many times the Bible says he come hopping out of that tomb, bound hand and foot, and Jesus said, Loosen him and let him free. You know what's so fascinating? How did he get up? How did he get up? If you lay down on your back and you wrap from head to toe, it's impossible for you to get up. If you don't believe it, I said something I should have done tonight. If you don't believe me, have, have somebody wrap you up in a bed sheet. Head to toe. And let them lay you on that ground and say, Get out! You can't do it. Because you see, it's impossible. But I read in the Word of God with men, they may be some things that's impossible. But my Bible tells me with God, all the things are possible. And everything is possible to you and I to them that believe. What did Jesus make me free from? The law of sin and death. You may be under the sound of my voice tonight and you think I've done messed up way too much. You got that mark of faith. I don't want Martha's faith. I want to go beyond Martha's faith. You see, Abraham had death before life ever began. How do you understand that? Yes, Lord. Amen. She never did bring forth a son. How do you know God had to resurrect the dead before life could begin? When a sinner comes off the street and has never known the Lord. How do you know?